All right. Sup, sup, guys. Want to make sure everyone can hear me, but welcome to the Council Gamers competitive live show presented by HaloCouncil.com. Please follow our Twitters. That's the name of the show. So if any time throughout the show you want to interact with us uh, via our Twitters, it's around our names there. But tonight we're going to be talking about all things competitive, uh, including upcoming events like MLG, Virgin Gaming, Arena Gaming, a Gamers Outreach Land. Then we're going to move on to discuss the actual games themselves like Halo, Call of Duty, Gears of War. But first, I'm going to introduce our players. We have Ninja, Halo Pro Player and Streamer Extraordinaire, and perhaps even a future COD Pro maybe. We'll ask him about that later. We have a 400-pound whale, owner of BigTeamBattle.net, a casual Halo competitive player, that's how I would describe her, and business owner. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, we have Golden Boy for the win. IGN Pro League Shoot Mania caster, former Call of Duty shout caster, knowledgeable FPS expert. What doesn't this guy do? I don't know. So, welcome to the show, everyone, and you guys can get talking. How's everybody doing today? Fantastic. Good. Indeed. Glad to hear it. I'm excited. The live shows are back. Your, your voice has been heard. So we're going to start it off with probably the biggest news um, that we've heard today. And that is, Halo's of course, Halo is back. No, <laughs> we do have the MLG opener details. We have at least the date and the location. Um, games have not been confirmed. So anyone uh, who doesn't know, you know what, what the dates are, it's going to be March 15th through the 17th in Dallas, Texas. Right off the bat, any of you guys planning on going? Who's going? Yeah, uh -huh. actually, I am. I'm planning on going even, uh, even like if IPL doesn't send me, I'm, I'm planning on going no matter nice. what. So, nice. Nice. Are you going to do any kind of media stuff? Uh, wait, what happened? Are you going to do any kind of media stuff? Are you going to do? No, I'm actually going to go as a player. I'm going to, I'm going to go and compete. Like if Call of Duty's there, I'm going to go and compete. If Call of Duty's not there and it's Halo, I'm probably still going to go and compete, but, but you know, like do media stuff. Nice. Yeah, because I wouldn't take Halo serious, you know, because Halo, I mean, come on, it's Halo. I'm kidding. Please, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. I just praise Halo for, like, a long time and, and even praise Ninja, so love me, everyone. Uh, but, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do, um, you know, and we, but they didn't announce what games were going to be there, right? Because I, I didn't see the tweet. Mm -hmm. I just saw it. I got the office today. They're like, hey, they announced MLG, and then that was it. No. Classic MLG, bro, right? They're like, right? you know, Sundance and Adam, they're like, all right, yo, you ready for this, man? Yep, all right, go fishing, whoop! They just put their poles out there, and they're like, uh, we have some details for MLG. Oh, oh, is it going to be Halo? Is it going to be Call of Duty? Like, and we're all, like, trying to grab and shit. Yeah, no, they haven't released anything. They're, they're all, they keep constantly tweeting, like, ASAP, we'll let you guys know. It's like, dude, that could be, like, two weeks before everything's finalized, man. It's, but we don't know. That sucks. We don't know. They, they, I mean, they, they've done that so many times, though. They don't know if they can get. No, we don't. No, yeah. Yet? It's um, they don't. They want like MLG wants one shooter. Like they want one FPS, but like they will do two FPS. And like you know, if they if the numbers are there, I guess you can say, and if like the the support is there, and from three four three Virgin Gaming, whatever the case may be, Microsoft. And as of right now, we everyone knows that Treyarch is like pretty much 150% behind Call of Duty. So, you know, yeah, it's definitely leaning more towards Call of Duty. You know, uh, to be on the circuit, guaranteed. But you know, we still can't be like you can't throw in the towel, dude. Can't throw yeah. it in. I mean, you have to look at it like this. Like, MLG has done this so many times in the past. And yeah. I was actually joking with one of my coworkers today. I was like, watch, they're just going to wait till March 1st, and then they'll announce, like, you know, what game is going to be there. Because that's just, like, how they operate. And I, I don't know why they do that. But, you know, and it's not to bash MLG. I just wish that they let us know ahead of time. So that this way we're not, you know, like, uh, I guess waiting and waiting to, like, book a flight. But, you know, at least we know what time the event is going to be. And that enough is uh, good, I guess, for, uh, for a lot of people to plan out. Because people just like to go and spectate. Right, so I, yep. I guess that kind of works out pretty well um, for those people. But uh, letting the community well, know in advance would be fantastic. Yeah, Robin? League of Legends and StarCraft Two are shoe ins. Book their flights. Oh yeah, they know they'll be there. Ninja, are, quick, quick are you booking your flight either way? Um, I'm gonna probably delay it a little bit. Um, I think no matter what, I'm gonna go just to attend. Even if Halo's not there, I'll probably just go to watch um, and just have fun. But I'm confident. I'm confident, and, uh, you know, uh, you'll probably see me there. We'll see you there. Nice. 
Looking forward to it. Um, Confident. So, so here's a question I have for you guys, just to throw it out there. Um, MLG's been known to do Gears of War show matches. I believe they did it with 2 and 3. And the release date, I believe, is March 19th for the game. So maybe we'll uh, even be able to see a little Gears of War action there. Maybe that's a little surprise they have under wraps. Just speculation on my part, just connecting dots, but it might be cool. Do you guys, you guys think they might do that? Maybe, um, you know, uh, but part of the reason why uh, Gears of War had the show match, I believe last time was because they were in Raleigh, so it was like right in the backyard of Epic. Uh, mm -hmm. This time around, it's Dallas, so I'm not too sure um, if that's going to be a possibility. Uh, but I would tell you, like, if you're a Gears of War fan, definitely, like, you know, stay mo because, I mean, I, I mean, the guy right behind me is the one who runs Hypha Station, so, I mean, if... Uh, <laughs> You know, I mean, you should just peg him. Jason Barbosa, he's the one who ran Hyphestation, created the whole damn thing. So if you, uh, you know, are, are a fan of Gears, definitely hit up that guy on Twitter, Captain Barbosa. He could, he could like, fill you in on what's going on with Gears. As far as MLG and Gears, you know, they haven't really said much about it. It's mainly been COD. Like, COD's been their focus, and Halo with Dallas. And, of course, like, they have, you know, the MLG Halo Twitch channel, and I I believe they also have, uh, you know, like they do like videos and stuff like that. I haven't haven't kept up with the content, honestly. So, so uh, Gears, I'm going to say 10% chance it's at Dallas. Nice. <clears throat> I mean, if MLG was smart, which they are, like, I think they might have it. Uh, the reason, like, I mean, Halo 4 had over 40,000 concurrent towards, like, the end of the, the end of the Sunday or whatever. And, um, like, it's it's huge advertising. Like, the game hasn't been played yet. Like, the glitch who's the best you know on the new the, a new game that like if you want to see it like there it is so i don't know you I, I kind of agree with golden boy though i think it's probably like 10 maybe 20 percent uh a secret call of duty you know like the last time wasn't it a pro invitational only then they only invite like the top eight teams whereas halo uh, 4 was like invited, a full no it, they invited only one team yeah <laughs> and uh, it was oh. epic devs so yeah i think it was only like three games too they only played like three so it was real quick was wasn't it for like twenty-five thousand dollars too? Was it wasn't it for money? That Wait, which one? The Gears of War show match in Raleigh? No, 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 no. Didn't they do like a Gears two show match? Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, that was a while ago. That was yeah. Well, well that like, was they did a show too. match, but it wasn't yeah. for money because I was like supplemented with like Gears one tournament or something. something. I don't okay. remember because I was like I wasn't following oh, Gears at the time. But yeah, probably. Who knows? I mean, I'm, I think like maybe Unbreakable could speak more on that, but he's probably getting flooded in the chat <laughs> by people trying to dance. <laughs> I don't think uh, we're going to hear from him anytime soon. Yeah, I believe the Gears of War 2 one might have been for money, because I remember, like, uh, T-Squared competed in it, and and they had sort of a big featurette around that. But it's been a while, so I don't know if there was prize money involved. Um, but do you guys think... Um, I mean, if we had to predict games, obviously we know StarCraft 2 is going to be there. League of Legends will be there. Uh, any Any surprises do you think will be there with either fighting games or or shooters? You think there's any underdog games that are gonna pop up? Mm. Pokemon. I can you. Pokemon. I'm going Pokemon. Pokemon, dude. That, did you see um, the 3D one? Just to get off topic, and we'll get right back on topic. The new 3D one looks sick. Yeah, Pokemon X and Y. The yeah. Poke yeah, yeah, the the moves were amazing. My brother showed me the trailer this morning. Yeah, <laughs> that looks sick. But uh, so I mean, as far as fighters go, hold on. They ran okay. out of colors, so now they're using letters. Yeah. Yup. Okay, I mean that's I mean it's fine, you know, like good, good thing for them. <laughs> I was just confused about that. Um, all right, fighters. Uh, I don't think fighters are coming back to MLG at all. Really? Not for a while. Like, huh. I mean, I don't know if you know, but like IPL just announced that we got Street Fighter Cross Tekken, yeah, Street Fighter Four. Oh, yeah, so it's sick. like right now IGN Pro League has the, the fighters like that people want to watch. Um, besides that one elusive fighter that everyone wants to watch, which is you know Marvel. But um, I, I think that uh, fighters aren't coming back to MLG. Uh, the one thing that I do hope returns again, because it went over really well in Dallas, was uh, Shoot Mania. Because Shoot Mania <laughs> had a booth there at MLG, and it was really popular. Like, I was forced to stay like on the side of PlayStation because I was brought there to do PlayStation content. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the Shoot Mania booth was, like, really popular. And uh, a lot of people dug the game. So maybe Shoot Mania might be there as, like, a... Uh, It'll probably just be there as a, uh, a booth title, not a MLG Pro Circuit title. Um, but then as far as like that is concerned, I really think our three games are going to be, you know, StarCraft, League of Legends, Call of Duty. That's it. Yep, Call of yeah. Duty, perhaps. Yeah. You know, because right. that's still up in the air. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, once again, just to point this out, <clears throat> nothing is official ever, pretty much, when it comes to Major League Gaming. Uh, they are definitely the king of surprises. Uh, like, Dallas, uh, Halo Reach being at Dallas, that, you know, the last event, or sorry, Columbus, like, the last event, you know, uh, was also, like, a huge, massive surprise. Like, so, you know... I'm looking, I'm honestly, dude, I'm like looking, I'm waiting for like a hundred people to tweet at me simultaneously, like retweeting Sundance and just be like, Halo 4, though. like I'll freaking shit my pants. Yeah. I want to depend on this Virgin Gaming deal, I think, really. I mean, I think that they would like to have it. If they're going to do Call of Duty, they might as well do Halo 4. It probably is all just contingent on the Virgin Gaming deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And from like, here's what I can say about that, by the way, because I've been talking a lot with one of the uh, one of the heavy like commissioners of Virgin Gaming. Uh, his name's Carl, uh, and I've, and like Ghost Ayami has been talking with him a lot. He's been middlemanning between you know Sundance, Bucket, Adam, and you know a couple players, a couple people from Virgin Gaming, and it has uh, exchanged information. And they like apparently were supposed to do a, a meeting of some sort. Like I don't know what was said. I can't promise tournaments from Virgin. I can't promise tournaments from MLG. But all I know is like. Like, we're trying. Like, not only are we trying, but, like, Ghost is trying. Virgin Gaming is trying. They've announced that they wanted to work with MLG. And they, I mean, at least Sundance is hopefully gave them the time of the day. Because once, if, if you guys don't know, Virgin Gaming owns rights right now to Halo 4. And uh, if you own rights, you can share them with what, whoever you want. The your rights. So. Does, Vir does Virgin Gaming do much as far as LAN tournaments go? Or is, or is most of their focus... From what I saw on their website, most of the focus was all online kind of cash tournaments. Did, did, yeah, did they they're um, they're, yeah. they're really good at uh, like from I've I watched like I went back on like YouTube a lot of their content and they they're really big with online tournaments with like qualifiers and then like you you go and play like the finals on land. Like they did a bunch of those with and they're still they're continuing to do them with like NHL uh like. Uh, Madden, like they have all these tournaments that they host um, for like a lot of money. And I was talking with Carly saying he can't promise anything, but like that's what they would be looking for uh, for Halo 4. Like people, if more people, if everyone said that they wanted LAN, then they obviously wouldn't host that many tournaments. But you know there's going to be people who are going to want, you know, online tournaments. So they're what they do is like they're a customer support um, company. So like they take people's in intake so if people say we want online tournaments they're gonna have online tournaments if everyone says we want you know only land then and no one says online then they're probably gonna try to host you know it's like an online qualifier with a, like a land finish but yeah, yeah they're so, known I mean, largely the, for their uh, online presence yeah. yep so what would be the incentive like for MLG what would be the pros and cons of them either creating a partnership or not I mean game in battles and all of Virgin Gaming online presence is that is that really what do you think really that's the hiccup is the game battle thing? From, from I don't think or? so. Halo Halo Four never Halo after Halo Three wasn't really like didn't really have the greatest presence for game battles after Halo Three. Um, Halo Three which was pretty big towards the beginning, but like the tournament wise, like usually rarely they never sold out. So I really don't think like it's where the money is. You know, MLG is not like, oh, Halo, you know, Halo 4 yeah. and game battles. We need this. I really think they're going to yeah, try to, you know, battles. hopefully like, work around that. Yeah. yeah. For Call of Duty, though, they have, like, That's 2v2 tournaments. Player. They have 2v2 tournaments, like, for, like, everything. 2v2 capture. With, like, 2v2 tournament dominion or domination. 2v2 search and destroy. 2v2, like, snipers only. Yeah. Like, they come up with, like, all these random tournaments. And, like, these kids are like, oh, my God, like, for, like hundreds of teams sign up. It's, I mean, I love it. I think that's awesome. If we could I, I have a bunch of like, a young presence like that. A, a Call of Duty yeah. player. <laughs> like, dude, man, like, you know, well, well, it's so good, dude. Yeah, All right, I have to, yeah. I have to ask then and bring this up real quick. Um, so the reason that really Halo hasn't been announced in detail with Virgin Gaming outside of VG Carl talking with the community is there is like an Xbox Live app that's being developed that will actually host some of that tournament functionality, like reporting games. Um, and matching up players uh, for the player. So it's going to be sort of really led and, and easy to get into. So there's going to be integrated Xbox Live tournament features, um, and they've announced that on Virgin Gaming site. You can check that out. Do you think this will help revive Halo competitions in LANs, or will this simply be uh, an online, in its own online bubble? 
I oh, think that... Yeah, yeah you right, go. go. No, you go! You, okay, you talk. all right, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, no, we're like, all right. Basically, here's the thing. Uh, and just I want to take a step back for a second, and uh, you know, something that uh, Molly had. Molly, right? I want to make sure yeah. I got the name right. Okay, had mentioned because uh, I feel weird calling you a 400-pound whale. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Um, yeah. So basically, one of the things that would really benefit Virgin Gaming and MLG and a partnership is that uh, if there's one thing that MLG has is the personalities, right? And the capability to bring the fan base on top of, you know, the uh, various people like Walshy, Puckett, you know, the names of Halo and bring them over to Virgin Gaming to help out. Another thing is that it will alleviate costs on MLG's end. Because, I mean, let's be honest here, Virgin Gaming is funded by, by Virgin. The company is loaded. They have money. You know, I'm 100% certain that the event will be run under Virgin Gaming's terms, considering the fact that they own the rights to Halo. So the way you got to look at it is like this. Partnering with Virgin would be a very good idea for Major League Gaming because it offsets costs for that company. And, uh, and right now, I, I can pretty much say that, you know, MLG is still running on venture cap could use that. Um, now, uh, the question that you had about uh, integration of Xbox Live and, um, you know, like how Virgin Gaming is going to do that, how that is going to revitalize the community, perhaps it will, uh, you know, in a certain way where it gets more of this, uh, uh, the public match people more interested into the game, the casual gamer more involved. But the thing is, though, is that at the end of the day, uh, the community needs to be receptive of that kind of <clears> idea because Virgin Gaming, they're going to do what they do because they're, they're a mildly successful company because of that. They've had a lot of success with Madden, and now that they're entering into shooters, and mind you, they have not had good, uh, good luck with shooters. They did Killzone. That was not that good. Actually, I would go as far as to say that was probably one of the worst events I played in. Um, in a while, uh, they had the failed Battlefield one point whatever million tournament oh, that boy. never happened. Right. You know, that didn't so even happen. That's fun. Um, and uh, they did another shooter event too, but it's blanking. I'm drawing a blank right now. So that's the thing. You have to look at it like this. It's like they have a track record of doing things not so great. Uh, perhaps parting with MLG, giving them that direction on how esports is conducted, how everything works, would benefit them a little bit in the long run. It does kind of go. sound like a perfect marriage. MLG has the foundation built up to run, you know, tournaments, tournament lands, and Virgin Gaming has the the uh, influx of capital that they would need to keep it going. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the thing. They need the they need the money. I, I wouldn't. I yeah. Mean, even IPL, you know, to, to it would be foolish to turn down a deal to work with Virgin Gaming because it's like, hey, it's money, you know, and they got exactly. Money. Much of it. Yeah. Um. The the main thing that I want to point out, like it's like Halo, the Halo community in general has been the problem from what I've you know been able to take in is change. It's like we don't know how to accept change, um, which is understandable because Halo Two is such a fantastic game. But the reason it was so good was because of the glitches. We can't expect Bungie slash 343 to produce a game that has glitches. You know what I mean? Like we're gonna like purposely allow you to break the game, super bounce all this stuff. Like, uh, with Halo 3 or with Halo 4 and Halo Reach, like, with uh, introducing sprint armor abilities and all these things. Uh, the, and, and now we're trying to, you know, if Virgin Gaming does take over, uh, you know, Halo's rights and doesn't really work with MLG and they do go towards an online aspect, like, we can't, like, turn away from it because, like, there will be money in it, you know? And if, if you do enjoy the game, which I do, and 343 is still working, you know, on trying to give, like, us giving them... Or ask, asking what we want, and they're like working on it. Ranking system, smaller maps, uh, double team playlist. <laughs> oh man, all I want is a double team playlist. <laughs> all right, sorry, yeah, but they, yeah. They, so, whatever happened to double team? That was awesome, dude. I used to, bro, remember <laughs> Duel and Halo yeah. Two? Like that was amazing too. A double playlist right now. <clears throat> like, what was the best? I love Duel. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm just reminiscing way too much of my old Halo Two clan. Yeah, days. man. Oh, I dude, bro. Above, no, and I was true, a clan man. leader, bro. Yeah. Well, that's a big <laughs> part. And and maybe uh, Virgin Gaming somehow, depending on how, you know, once we get the details on how this tournament sort of thing will work, if it's anything sort of like Call of Duty Elite, where you can actually form a team online and, and have that sort of clan feel, um, I think it could help at least revive the competitive 
spirit of the game, if nothing else, and then hopefully that translates into viewers for these competitions. So that would, I think that's the biggest deal uh, that most of these companies are looking at, and I'd love to get your guys' opinion. Uh, <clears throat> do you think a lot of these leagues are sort of uh, putting Halo on the back burner because it's not as uh, profitable with CPM or sponsorships as it used to be when you have big games like Call of Duty and you know StarCraft II taking up most of the spotlight? I think it kind of goes down to the base. A lot of people aren't having fun with the game, and so if they're not, it's going to affect it across the board, including in competitive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are having agree. fun with I it. Agree with but the thing is, is uh, and here's here's where I think they they failed, uh, which is sad to say, but we all know that they did fail with the game that they produced to us. Um, the competitive playlist, like we don't, we still don't have one. We have great competitive settings now, but like what keeps people playing? Not everyone ha- has the luxury of having a hundred people on their friends list all playing the same game online, wanting to play, you know, customs. Well, I me, I play for like twelve hours a day. I want to freaking play Infinity Challenge, and like I want to have a rank. I want to, you know, I want to have like competition. I want to be able to play double team. I want to be able to have ranks and enjoy my game when I'm not trying to play competitive. You know, just like the good casual gameplay too. And that's not what Halo 4 offered. You still get people quitting, joining session. Like I've searched with the party of four in Infinity Slayer, and it splits me because two players on the other team quit, and two players on my team quit, and now like Ryan Noob and Goofy are on one team, and I'm on the other team with like another guy. It's like, dude, what? Like, I didn't just search this damn playlist to play against the people I'm searching with. You know, that's not fun to me. That's just like irritating, and that doesn't happen. You know, yeah. in the Call of Duty like searching matchmaking playlist. So, um, well, I, yeah. I think that like with the one major thing, and Halo will hopefully see, uh, you know, a revival. Uh, I even feel like Halo as a, the casual player of Halo Four right now. When I hop on and play, it's not bad at all like I'm, I'm having fun playing the game uh you know it's not like the, the greatest it's not like when i first popped in halo 2 and i i pretty much just sat there for hours and hours on end but i'm still enjoying it to to an extent but i can understand those who like invest time into it it, it uh, may not be the best experience but i think that when ranks come out and you know visible ranks come out it really is gonna help out halo a lot because that was always something that set halo apart from like every other game was that ranking system it just was yeah. something that was special and everyone remembers it because i remember back in the day when you played halo 2 and it was a bitch to get past like the other rank because it was all modders after that like it was just funny you know it was, it was just funny stuff but it was fun and i remember it and that was something that always drew me to halo i enjoyed playing rank because of that but um you know it, it's just that's something that's gonna have to We'll, we'll see where that develops. Now, one thing that I hope, or I should say wish, that this Virgin Gaming thing did for Halo 4 is something that it did for, or something that has been done for Black Ops 2, which is the league play system. It's a, in, I mean, is it perfect? No, but it's a great step in the right direction. And if you had a company like Virgin Gaming, right, uh, you know, pretty much have this system in place and, and put it into Halo 4, imagine how much traffic that will create because that's really at the end of the day that's what it is it's numbers right and it's numbers of people playing the game because that's what 343 wants they want people playing the game because when people play the game then that's when people watch the game and uh right now it's like people are watching but not as many people as they want and the ratios are a little off so they they definitely want to see people playing the game more and that virgin gaming stuff should definitely uh spike interest in it imagine if they were to do something like that put a league play functionality into Halo 4 matchmaking, you know, giving you a master's rank, a diamond rank, whatever the hell you want to put in there, that would be sick. That would really uh, change uh, the direction that Halo is in right now. Um, but once again, it's all speculation, and we can only see what Ridge Gaming and all that's going to, you know, come from there. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on. Uh, <clears throat> good talks there. I think Virgin Gaming is definitely a step in the right direction for Halo. I mean, at this point, it can't hurt, right? Uh, but upcoming, uh, we have the Arena Gaming League tournament coming up January 25th to the 27th at the College of DuPage. I hope I'm saying that right. I threw a little French twist on it. DuPage. (laughs) DuPage. All right. In Chicago, basically. Um, So that event's coming up. Now, uh, I've heard some talks. uh, Ninja, you'd probably know about this. They were using the competitive V5 settings, um, and it still says that on their website, but I've heard they might switch to the MLG settings. Do you know any updates on Mm. that? 
Yes, they are using uh, the MLG settings with a couple of their maps. I think they're keeping Extraction on Anchor 9, and I think they're keeping another one of their, another one of their maps. Um, but for the, they are using it's only BR start now, and um, the oh my god, the ordinances are Harley Shield, um, Hologram, and Thruster Pack. Okay. Cool. So yeah, yep. And then uh, just real quick for those of you in chat, I'm linking you to Ghost Ayami's blog where you can check out those V1 settings. Um, so take a look at those there. Uh, so we know what settings uh, they're going to use now. Uh, they started with a competitive V5. They've switched to the MLG. Do you think that'll hurt attendance? Are teams going to drop out um, because they, you know, teams signed up thinking they would be playing these settings and now they've switched to the other ones? Um, do you think that sits well with some teams? Uh, not at all. I mean, I think that does that does sit well. It does not, uh, because people, I mean, from what I've noticed, I've had I've had nothing but positive feedback from all from like uh, like a lot of the professional players. And I mean, the past like the two v two tournament that I played with BR Start and and uh, the three v three tournament that I played was phenomenal. Like showing wise, viewer wise, I had three thousand two hundred in the finals of the two v two and four thousand two hundred in the finals of the three v three. And that was with Ghost Yami's things. And like it was just constant. I was reading the chat really. Fun to watch, awesome settings, like all just all that, nothing but positive feedback, and I really think people are starting to see how like competitive it really can be, and how it's super entertaining to watch. It's fun as shit to play. Like I can't tell you, man. I've it's you know I get into it, and it's it was super easy to get into it uh, with these settings. So I think it's going to be fine for uh, AGL. The mo mm -hmm. Ghost settings, it's the most fun that I've had playing Halo. I know a lot of people had issues with it. They felt it was too stripped down and everything, but what it came down to for me was I had fun with it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than vanilla settings, so <laughs> yeah. that's what it comes down to. Do you like it? Yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, you know, throwing like, a, throwing like a speed boost power up. You know, instead of like an overshield on some maps, or maybe throw like a damage boost top mid on uh, on a simplex or something like that. You know, throw in a little bit of three four threes ideas because I love. First of all, I love the the idea of damage boost speed boost. I think they're really cool. They add like a an awesome feature to the game, and it's really something extra that commentators can talk about, um, which is huge. We don't have spectator mode. We don't have. Um, you know, all those, we don't have, like, we can't, like, go over the map and, like, show where everyone is. But, you know, if we have cool shit to talk about, like, oh, what's that? Why is the screen blue? Oh, we just picked up the speed boost. It lasts this amount of time and, you know, just shit like that. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's there, good. Wasn't there something with the Forge settings, though, where you couldn't use um, speed boost and damage boost as map pickup? I want to say, maybe I'm incorrect, but I thought that that was some issue where, with Forge mm. where you couldn't use those as map pickup. They were only in oh, personal uh, ordinances. Maybe chat can confirm. I haven't heard that, uh, right. but unfortunately it wouldn't surprise me. You know, one of those deals. Yeah, that, I mean, because Overshield is on a map, so yeah. I feel like you should be able to... Yeah, someone says you can use them. Okay. It's not true, no idea. You definitely can't have damage boost on maps. All right, but yeah, then... Uh, who knows? <laughs> maybe they patched it. Maybe, they, maybe it was addressed in a patch or something. Um... But yeah, so that's that's a tournament that's coming up. Um, I've got some of the pro teams that are confirmed for attending right now. Uh, and if this information isn't up to date, I'm sorry, you can correct me. Uh, but Pulse Ambush will be there. Heinz Formal, APG, and Snipe Down. We have Warriors attending. Ninja, Ryan Noob, Goofy, Woo! and Legit. I have a question to ask you. I'm going to put you on in the hot seat, Ninja. Uh, then some that's other notable names. Uh, Legendary is going to be Kobe, Sargoth. Predevinator, there you go. Yep. Uh, Lunchbox, I, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. Hanzoku, I guess, is alumni Dursky neighbor, and apparently they're looking for one. So if that's you, hit them up. Get some get some tryouts in there. But the question I want to ask is, there's a lot of players uh, who have been practicing Call of Duty now. I know Formals showed some interest. I know you've been streaming with your team a lot. Do you think it's gonna affect your performance at all? Uh, looking at the talent pool, I'd say you guys still have the advantage uh, just being together and coming off the win in Dallas, but do you think that, are you guys going to start focusing on Halo 4 the closer that tournament comes up, or are you going to keep playing Call of Duty? 
Uh, I'm always playing Halo. I'm always playing Halo no matter what. Um, am I lagging? Is this lagging? Uh, it's been cutting out a me? little bit, but it's been good. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, alright. No, uh, like, I, I'll always play Halo, and I'm pretty sure that the closer it gets, like, my team will start to get on and, you know, play more as well. But, um, we've been, the only reason we really dabble on Call of Duty is, uh, just in case the worst, like, worst case scenario, like, all, all Halo 4 tournaments stop. But I know that's not the case, which is why I'm on Halo every single day. Um, but I've, yeah, like, Faisal's already been texting me and Legit has been texting me and they're saying, like, yeah, we need to get on Halo 4 more and scrim more. You know, AGL's coming up and obviously we want to win, so... So yeah. Ninja, call your top three teams. Who who do you think is gonna be the top? Who, three who teams? I think is gonna take top three? Yeah. Um, honestly, I want to say here. I want to say Warriors, obviously top three. Not saying first, second, or third. Definitely gonna be first. Uh, no, Warriors top one. Uh, <laughs> Kobe's team. I definitely think. Um, I mean, Kobe doesn't play that much. Kobe's been on Call of Duty almost every single day. So, you know, I, but I still think that, you know, Devin and Sargoth are both incredible players, uh, and Lunchbox has been playing Halo as well, so I think they're a top three team. Um, APG, Snipedown, Formal, none of them really play Halo anymore. <laughs> Hines is the only one that ever gets on, so, like, I, unless their team starts to get on and practice a lot of Halo and, and really get used to the settings, I don't really see them doing, you know, I don't really see them placing top three, even though Snipedown is probably still, like, has the best shot in the game. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So those are my predictions. Yeah. Well, regardless, that'll make so what do you think the tournament of the, uh, exciting to watch. Yeah, go ahead, Molly. What do you think of the commentators? Matt, Ooh. Commentating. <laughs> Who else is commentating with him? I think it's going to be like whoever wants to, kind of. You know, like who wants to hop on and commentate with him. But Maddox, holy shit, that spider is huge. Hang on. All right, hang Put on. Put your cam on it. I want to see I'm, it. Hold that question. Put your okay, cam no, on it. Wait. Okay, hang on. Okay. All right, hang on. I don't All think right. you'll be able to see it because do you see it? Do you see it? It's right there on the wall. Look, it's, what is it doing with it? Oh, Do you yeah. see it? I see the dot. Look at that thing, dude. You see the dot? Yeah. I was expecting a uh, tarantula. Uh, <laughs> it's not a tarantula. <laughs> like, that was huge. No, dude. All right. Anyways, uh, Maddox Sells is by far one of the most interesting people to listen to and talk to, and he's definitely going to be an incredible commentator. So uh, I'll be right back. All right. Who's the, who's the commentator? Who is uh, it? It's Maddox Sells. He's got a YouTube channel where he swears a lot and i gotta admit the dude's entertaining as hell like he cracks me up every video he, he has has sex with a lot of mothers he, yeah. he's so funny at the cells. yeah we'll see he's raw oh, I, would, wow, okay. I would describe his commentary so as raw yeah. <laughs> oh um raw. The funny thing is that uh i actually just got a skype i know this is like not in the thing but i just got a skype from jeff from umg and uh he wanted to know what the halo community would think if umg picked up halo I think they'd love it. Chat, what do you yeah. think? I think chat would agree. I think chat would freak out, and they'd uh, they'd love him. And that would be awesome. Yeah, UMG is that he, just, he just sent to me. A tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. UMG is the one who hosts the ten thousand dollar tournament. A uh, tournament, ah, tournament. Yes. So, uh, I, I work with them a lot. I casted like their first few events, and um, you know. It was just something that he brought up. He said that they were seriously considering it. That was what he said in Skype. Nice. Nice. Oh, so, hey, more more for more UMG. events to look forward to. G. And more, more events for Halo. That's what I'm talking You guys don't know what UMG, by the way, is a Call of Duty league. But uh, they, they love Halo. We're like, we all do. So, you know, the, the love is there from COD to Halo. Just, you know, I, I think if people miscon misconstrue that, you know, like Call of Duty uh, players and pros think that they're elitist. But like you know, I mean, uh, we all, including myself, have such a, a respect for um, Halo because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Halo. You know, and that is, is the yeah, fact. A lot of um, dudes, this, Call of Duty players start in Halo. Well, yeah, we you know we we started in we started in uh, I mean like I like I said I I started in Halo too. You know, just playing Halo two for fun, and then I, that's how I found out about MLG. So I feel like you know the thing is we we all appreciate what. Halo has done to help build console competitive game because without Halo, none of this would have ever have happened. And and just to uh, go so off, that's yeah. just uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Like that's kind of the point of this show too, sort of the reboot of the live show. I wanted to bring in people who had, you know, experience basically in the whole competitive gaming field because you know people talk about unification, 
uh, and, and sort of unifying. We wanted to, you know, unify the Halo community and all that. But the strength in numbers, right? If we unify all games, everybody helps each other out, scratches each other's back. We're, you know, that much bigger. So instead of just being, you know, a Halo community, we're, you know, maybe an FPS community or, or a console community, what have you. So uh, I see it as being a, a step in a great direction. You know, the more communities who are supporting other communities can't be a bad thing. Yeah, that's the way I think about it as well. You know, we, the more the merrier, it, it grows the scene, and that's exactly what you want. Like, I mean, hell, I was even at one point trying to, uh, you know, I am still am trying to get, uh, you know, IPL to do Halo as well. So, you know, that, that's something I've been trying to uh, convince my, my higher management to get into it. It's just our entire business runs on, uh, you know, like daily content, like live stream content. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard to do something on Halo when there is no way to do online daily content because of no spectator mode. So that's exactly. been a little bit of a challenge. But, like, if I could if I could somehow convince someone to let me do a Halo event, if, if it was in the realm of possibility to do a Halo event, I would have I would went after that, like, right away. And for those of you guys who don't know who IPL is, IGM Pro League, we probably listed the biggest esports event of 2012. Just for Throwing it out there. Um, so yeah. You might want to. Hey, let me let me get the let me uh sh get the dirt off your shoulder. Dirt off the shoulder. <laughs> exactly. There There's a go. lot of dirt. I just gotta That's put it all perfect. put it all down there. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but you know that was what uh, Jeff had hit me up with. If you're interested and you like Halo, and I mean obviously you like Halo, everyone here is like screaming how much they love Halo. Um, you can hit them up on Twitter. It's at UMG Gaming. UMG Gaming, like not UMG Aiming or UMG Gaming. So you could just uh, check that out. And uh, I'd love to know you'd like to see Halo there, you know. And if you're just saying, I, I saw someone in the chat say MLG or bus. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, he, like that is the problem there, right right there. You, you can't Amen, do that, dude. you know. Like, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, open your eyes and realize that the reason why the, the position, and, and don't get this wrong, I've worked with MLG numerous times. Like, I mean, I've worked with them a lot throughout the, throughout the years. And... Uh, the fact is, is that Halo isn't right now at the point where it is because MLG killed it, you know, like, and, and it's a sad reality from an outsider's perspective, you know, with the way that they cannibalize the players and not allow them to grow and play games and play like WCG and all that stuff. And they wanted to control the space, monopolize the space and the space that was already small enough as it is. It kind of just ruined what, you know, uh, what potential halo had to grow imagine where halo would be if it was running the same open uh strategy that uh, mlg is running now with starcraft league call of duty and you know now with halo as well it, it halo would be substantially bigger in my personal opinion in the esports realm but of course that comes with developer support but i i think that like you know the passion for halo was always there and it just really sucks that like you know we can't uh we, we can't see that again at least not for a little while See what you're talking about, like how it's potentially hurt Halo, but you can't blame Sundance for having that business model. I mean, look at the NFL. If they allowed, you know, their players to play in, in any football league, you know, if they had allowed them to play in Arena Football League or whatever, there's a reason they're so successful because they have that model. Players sign a contract with them, but they just didn't support it enough. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I, think it it was, I think it was too early for the time frame but we're, we're veering off topic i think we could do this for another for another one oh, that but, topic you know, can be talked about for a year man <laughs> yeah because I, I have my personal opinions on it and my views on it coming from like my scene because you know like if they tried to do that with cod it just wouldn't have flown you know like it wouldn't have happened simple as that because the players would have just went and played something else as much as they love mlg yeah, i don't think it was successful but i think like at the start when when it's just they're just starting out you can't blame them for having that business model because it was successful yeah. In other places, yeah. it, it was proven. Yeah, you look at UFC. UFC runs that model, so yeah. you know it makes yeah. it makes sense. You know they they buy they buy their players, or like I mean, or their fighters. Excuse me. So I completely understand that. A uh, quick question: though, What players, what Halo players, haven't played Call of Duty? Because I know Formal just followed me on Twitter. But like, I mean, like, I I I've, I've never spoken to him before. So like, is he like one of them? And like, uh, like, are people seriously uh, considering uh, making a transition? I think literally. So. Every almost every professional Halo player that isn't Clutch, Maniac, and Lethal. I I think not even Lethal, maybe Lethal. Like 
a lot of people like Cloud, Clutch, Maniac, all of them are playing League of Legends. I don't think Clutch Maybe is playing League. He might not be. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but seriously, everyone, everyone else, like almost every, almost every Halo player, professional player, has purchased Call of Duty. The only reason I bought it was because my team really wanted to try, you know, just in case. Like things were looking grim, and we had like a, you know, a serious discussion. Uh, but I also like how cool would it be to be professional in like two leagues? You know, like Call of Duty and Halo. Like that would be pretty sick. It. Well, Crim Six, not at the same time though. There's a difference. Like, Crim Six literally oh, yeah. stopped playing Call of Duty entirely, switched to Halo, and then did it. You know what I mean? Like, and he was a single player. But like taking sure, all you four Halo give credit though, you got to give him credit because that's. Tough. Oh, oh no, I'm not taking anything away from Crim Six. He had one of the nastiest snipes in the game, hands down. Um, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of players. A lot of Halo players switch over to Call of Duty. Not switching over, playing. I'm t I yeah, guarantee you, like right now, like yesterday, neighbors team got on. Yeah, a bunch of a bunch of professional players, Halo uh, players, got back on Halo Four and were screaming yesterday um, because AGL is so close. See, when the tournaments are there, they're like they're gonna play. It's just they always come back. You gotta have something to play for. Otherwise, why would we stay? Like, why would anyone else stay and, and play and only play? Play Halo 4 if MLG is not even going to pick it up, especially if you're a professional player and you make a living. Or not even a living, but you you, know, you get a lot of your income from uh, winnings at and tournaments and stuff like that. enjoy playing it. There's, then there's literally like no it. reason to no play exactly, Molly. Then there's really no reason. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think this is the first time we'll start to see some probably multi-game pros like in the fighting game community. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Halo pro who is now a Call of Duty pro and still plays Halo. Sort of like in 2007 with uh, Halo 2 and Shadowrun when that came out. Of course, players like Walshy and Ogre 2 had pro status in both games. Uh, but we're going to prepare for a quick break. But first, we're going to make just a public service announcement, maybe. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but just, just a heads up to anyone who doesn't know. Uh, Halo Council has their first kind of tournament or, or sponsored tournament with the Gamers Outreach and Gamers Forgiving LAN, which is going to be taking place in Eastern Michigan University Student Center, and that's February 16th to February 17th. There's also going to be StarCraft II there, League of Legends there, um, Call of Duty Black Ops there, and Halo oh, 4 Duty. there. Yeah, and it's uh, the Halo tournament format uh, is a 4v4. First place is $1,500, second place $750, $25 per player, and donations go to charity. Um, I will give you guys the info to that uh, in the chat. Where you can register and check and out more. And is Walshy commentating? Yeah, Walshy will be commentating. Uh, I'm working on getting myself out there, so that'll probably happen. Um, and there's been, you know, uh, a couple other names being thrown around who might be out there. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a sick event. Uh, just kind of a more relaxed atmosphere, almost like a dream hack where it's more of a LAN, and then there's also the side tournament. So check that out, guys. It's also uh, on our front page at Halo Council. So. You can check that out here. Links in the chat. But we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, and we'll see you guys soon.
All right, what's up, guys? We're back. Hope you enjoyed that break. Maybe you did some crunches, worked on your New Year's resolution. But now we're going to be talking about Halo 4. And uh, the first thing I'm going to ask, and, and even from an outsider's perspective or, or, or any, any other sense, um, how do you guys feel the developer involvement has been with the game? <clears throat> with uh, Halo? Yeah. Mm, I want to say minimal. Uh... I mean, what I, what, I, what I truly don't understand is, is why wasn't there, like, a beta? I, I mean, I don't even think Call of Duty had a beta, but, like, Strong Side, Flame Sword, Elamite Warrior, all of, and Nated, all of them, like, helped work on the game, or at least work on the competitive settings. And what, what I really don't understand is why didn't they have a say in the ranking system? I'm pretty sure 343 informed them there wasn't a ranking system when they were helping work on the settings. And I really feel like, like, what really pisses me off more than anything in the world is... Is the fact that the only thing the talk of Halo Reach pretty much after the day came out was why don't we give us a ranking system like that was it that was pretty much like that and bloom like get the shit out of here that's <laughs> all we can about the last year of Halo Reach Halo 4 gets picked up by 343 and what don't we have again ranks like that's like pretty to me that's the biggest slap on the face I feel like 343 took out their you know their their big dick and just like smack the entire community in the face, like we're giving you. <laughs> All right, I think I think Ninja just froze everything by talking about. I don't want to freaking have credits. I don't want to spend my credits on something. I want to have a ranking system and like. Oh man. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was incredible. Did you cut out? You cut out, and I just. So you're like waving a giant penis yeah. like in that direction, and that was it. Like you cut out with a cock in your hand, basically, is what is what yeah. just happened. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but it, I think most of us would agree, and and that the the support seemed great at the beginning. The support almost seemed like it was. Uh, <laughs> the support seemed like it was there more before the game even came out, and actually that's because a lot of three four three went on vacation. Um, I found it on NeoGaf that. The actual, they won't be fully staffed again, uh, aka everyone won't be back in the office until January 21st. Um, that's actually the date when they'll be back at full capacity. Everyone will, you know, be in the building. Um, so, I mean, we it's got. Like what happened is like, like Microsoft gave them this deadline, and everyone was working overtime to hit it, and they still released the game too soon before it was ready and then they all went on vacation because they've been working for two years straight or apparently or whatever However i many. know from the game but and now they've been gone for a month because they're on vacation so i mean you can't blame them i mean they need a vacation i get that but they should have maybe staggered their vacation or, or left some of the key people who can make decisions you know in the office for a little while longer or, or at least their PR team to, to sort of ease the pain. Um, <clears throat> I have a kid, though, that Bravo has been vocal on forums, you know, that, that, that at least he's acknowledging that people are giving feedback. I think that's the biggest problem is not so much that there's, like, not immediate changes, but there doesn't even seem to be an acknowledgement of some of the major problems. That's my problem, anyway, that they don't even seem that they care or that they're hearing what people are saying. And, and Bravo's probably the only one who's active right now because he was just hired and doesn't have his vacation time yet, to be honest. Yeah. He's, he's not allowed yeah, to go on I was, I was, I've been texting Bravo a lot lately, telling him about a lot of the things that, like, really need to be fixed. Um, I mentioned to him the, uh, if you search playlists with five people in any playlist, you get back that out, which is a huge problem when you're searching uh, a playlist that requires five people or, like, Oddball is a 5v5, Capture Flag 5v5, uh, King of the Hill 5v5. Um, Infinity Challenge Flag was 5v5, and I got we got kicked out so many times, like aborted from playlist. <laughs> Anyways, I told like I, that's not, that's besides the point. I told Bravo, I was like, Yo, dude, you gotta fix this. I'm like, Every time you search with five people, it's not just me, it's everybody. Like you get kicked out, and he. He's like, got it, duly noted. He's like pushing it up to the, you know, the top of the to-do list, stuff like that. So Bravo, definitely um, a huge a, a huge addition to the 343 squad, and I'm in love with that. Um, yeah, I, but I really like that they hired him. I appreciate that he is posting, and it's clear that he's 
aware and making his presence known, you know, that he's reading things and listening to people. I really appreciate that. So yep. uh, we know that there's future map DLC um, and a title update planned. Uh, do you think that, that a, a solid, solid map update would be enough? And then also touch on, feel free to touch on, you know, what you'd want to see in a title update. I would love to see, I mean, if you throw in some sexy small maps, dude. We're talking good maps, right? And you throw in, uh, you know, throw in a double team playlist, throw in, you know, even just combine all the OBJ playlists into yeah. one objective it's the same like it's crazy thing like since like halo 2 halo 2 to halo 3 halo reach like there's this thing what was it called team objective yeah, <laughs> and you could play exactly seconds. like please why like think about it why would you want to separate people like like separate the the objective community if you will like the more people that are searching a playlist the faster you get games the faster you know uh join in session well, would potentially be able to work because more people are searching the playlist. Also, I would love to see uh, a button, or uh, you know, you could turn off join in session. You know what I mean? Like you could, like if you're uh, an individual player who only gets to play Halo every once in a while and you kind of need join in session, you would leave it on. But if you're someone like me, or you're someone like you know, someone who hates losing, you don't want to join a game when you're already losing. You can just turn off join in session, and it won't and it won't put you in um, an already uh, occurring game. You know, I normally run in full party when I play, and one night I just kind of felt like playing by myself, and I and join in session, join in progress, made my night miserable. If you've ever played, <laughs> Halo, no, I'm not kidding. If you've ever played by no, yourself, I agree. I, 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 like five or six games in a row, I join only to hear like enemy team nearing victory, and I was like, <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me. It was. I don't see how people can play this game by themselves. I really don't. It's. It was atrocious. It made me rage quit. I quit playing the game after like five games. I couldn't take it. I mean, I would. Just, just one thing that I hope that they change um, that really shocked me that they put it in the game was, I mean, what what's the deal with like you getting shot out of sniper and like you know? Oh my! Still. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I mean, seriously, what what the hell is that? Like, I've been playing Halo for years and. That never happened. Why Why change that? That was an awesome thing Dude. because it was nothing better than, like, getting shot and then, like, you were scoped in and you pull the trigger right away and the scope comes out, you know, because you just got shot and then you get the headshot. Like, oh, that's some cool stuff. I don't know why you'd ruin that, you know? Um, I, I'm kind of cool with the vertical lift when you're getting shot with the BR. Like, I'm all right with that. That makes sense, I guess. You know, because you're getting shot, so you're not just going to stay still, but... I don't know. Just that—that that was a real weird decision that I think they should have uh, really. really just, and, I, and Ninja, you seem to be really passionate about that. <laughs> Dude, that let me explain something. Uh, in Halo Two. It happened in Halo Two. It happened in Halo Three. It happened in Halo Reach. The ability—it's called a recovery shot—is what Mick one called, it, and I thought it was one of the greatest like terms ever. Recovery shot. Mick one and I honestly had some of the best recovery shots in Halo and like in Halo Reach, like across the map when it was like no bloom, no sprint. Like, known to man. You're like, you're one shot across the map and someone's shooting you, and you can just quick scope them and smack them in the face, and then their reticle goes like 50 feet in the air because they're, you know, like, not get it, they're not ready to get, sm like, smacked out of scope, and then you just hit the next shot, hit the next shot, hit the next shot, and like, you five them across the map and you're one shot. Whereas in Halo 4 now, okay, someone can just be scoped in, like, some idiot on freaking complex, a thousand feet away with a DMR, can be scoped in on you. And he hits you four times, and you finally find out where the fucker's hiding because he's got camouflage, and it just wore off. And then you hit him once, and he and like you hit him twice, but now he's still scoped in, and he's like he'll eventually hit one more shot before you die. Like whatever, like dude, that takes out so much skill. I mean, with the battle rifle, mind you, like you can put on like some ridiculous strafe, uh, and and maybe like have like a combat kill. But with that, with 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 flinch, that just it, it really really like closed the competitive gap. I mean, just, you know, I know people don't like the flinch. I, I was just saying, like, you know, when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, uh, you know, different, whatever. Um, and then, yeah. You didn't realize you were going to uh, open that can of worms? <laughs> I mean, I, I, flinch, flinch has always been a problem, like, in any game, like, whenever they add flinch because yeah. it adds randomness. You know, like, flinch yeah. is even in COD, and we've been trying to get rid of flinch for, like, ever. Um, you know, we have to have a perk called toughness that allows us to have less flinch. 
fuck well, we have the game. Well, we have stability, but unfortunately yeah, then but it the, just but makes it even stronger. No, 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 no. It's the, you have stability, but, uh, sorry, you have to have SR rank 130 or some shit like that, or, you know, to be able to use stability. Because oh. it, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not available on land because it's... It's not available unlocked. on land because you're not... Yup. And basically yeah. throwing some throwing some old Call of Duty shit. Do you remember when people had to like rank up in prestige to 55 on LAN? Like in the very your, first Call of Duty? Bring your profile on a card and everything. Yep. Those, are, those are great. That was the those best. were the days, dude! Uh, that's that's when we were our prime. <laughs> <laughs> well, it dude, should be... I remember so many people bitch about Call of Duty. They're like, like yeah, All we right, got a prestige. I, I, I got a fun story real fast. Just okay. Kidding. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 launch. I already had the game like a week and a half before the game came out, so I was already playing it. I already knew the answer to the question, but I met Robert Bowling at an event in New York. Uh, it was a LAN event where they were launching Modern Warfare 2, and I was with like this interview crew. Uh, Raw Gameplay was the name of this YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, we were there, and uh, we had an interview with Robert Bowling. So the one question I told the guy who was interviewing, I was like, listen, just ask him if LAN is in the game. I just want to hear what he says. Right? Now, we all know Modern Warfare 2 had no LAN. Right? It was that ranking bullshit. So, the <laughs> guy asks Robert Bowling like this, and the guy looks dead into his eyes and says, Yeah, yeah, there's land in the game. It's fully functional for tournament play. We work with Major League Gaming and all that stuff, and it's just like, yeah, freaking liar. It's all PR, <laughs> man. Like, they're, they're just trying to sell you a game. That's it. So they'll tell you everything that they want to say, or everything, everything that you want to hear in order for you to purchase the game. That's the same thing that happened with Halo 4. Same thing, even to an extent with Black Ops 2, because granted, yeah, we have all these amazing features, but where's the support from Activision? Treyarch's supporting it, but where's the support from Activision, who has all the big bucks? Why are they not throwing any support, like, toward events and all that stuff? You know, or why is it that it's taking so long for companies like MLG and IPL to be able to secure a contract for Call of Duty? It's because they already got your money, so that's it, you know? And um, that's probably one of my biggest gripes about it. You know, 343 doesn't need to fix anything. They don't need to do anything. They should, because that's what, you know, you want to appease buy, your community. People are going to buy Halo 5 anyway, because they're just keeping hope alive, man. They're keeping oh, hope man. alive. It's like a yeah. it's like a bad relationship. Like, you keep sending flowers to the girl that broke up with you, you know what I mean? Well, hey, to be honest, I'm going to do everything in my absolute power to work with Bravo. I mean, like, Bravo's not an idiot. He knows what we want. And I'm assuming that they're going to be keeping Bravo on the on this 343 staff during the creation of Halo 5. But I, I will do everything I can. Like, I don't really have much pull at all. But, but I'm an intelligent person when it comes to, like, what people want competitively. And I understand what a competitive game takes. Especially after seeing what freaking Call of Duty has done and where we've gone away from. So, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can to not have Halo 5 suck. Yeah, and then that's what we all want, man. We all want like the Halo we love. Unfortunately, that's different for other people. You know, some people love Halo One, Halo Two, but at least the game everyone can enjoy and get behind and and watch, um, because you know not everyone's like a fan or the biggest fan of StarCraft Two. Some people prefer Brood War, but everyone can at least back the game and and understand it on its own merits. So yeah, I think that's that's what uh you know three four three can do is at least show the community that they care and they're they're not just trying to you know, get our sale or our, our initial, um, our initial 60 bucks and then they're kind of done with it, um, which, you know, sucks. Uh, but yeah, so wait, I, I do want to point something out real quick. Everyone's saying in the chat, I'm not, I, I still love Halo 4, me personally. The V1 settings are incredible. Now, the only thing that's left to do is it's, uh, it's up to, it's like it's in 343's hands, like from here on out, like whether they want to add good playlists, um, you know, fix like a lot of the ranking systems, stuff like that. I still think this is an incredible game. Yeah, I'm not in love, you know, I'm not looking forward to Halo 5. Halo 4 has just begun, and I still think it can be one of the best games on the circuit for Halo 4, for our, for MLG, you know, FPS. Uh, everything can be patched, seriously, so, you know? Yeah, I mean, the game I on land, the game on land is amazing. Like, the only reason that people are bitching is because of the online play. If you've watched tournaments, they're fun as shit to watch. Right, but like once again, Molly stated this uh, about Call of Duty. Like, you're not gonna you're not gonna play Halo 4 for the matchmaking system anymore. You know, like you would in Halo 2 and Halo 3. That's why people played Halo so much was because of the matchmaking system, not even because of MLG. You know, yeah. and so okay. Yeah, just want to throw MLG's that out there. influence on Halo is so minimal in comparison to the rest of the sandbox. You know, like mm -hmm. it's insane. That's, it's, it's that's what I just want. I just want I want 
some of these changes implemented across the board in every playlist, like not even just a competitive playlist. I think if it's a problem in the game, they should fix it in every playlist. I don't understand, you know, the chemo crouch glitch, taking out the bolt shot as a, as a secondary start weapon. There's oh all kinds God. of things that can be fixed. Dude, bolt shot 2013, remove it, please. <laughs> SMG starts you know, for everyone. I, would, I, would, I want to see that in every playlist, removed in every playlist, not just the quote-unquote competitive playlist. Agreed. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, whenever 343 is at capacity to be able to, I guess, implement these changes, they actually step up to the plate and do it. Uh, but... We'll move on to the next the next game I want to talk about, which has actually got some really exciting news coming up um, in regards to, to what they have going on. But the um, Modern Warfare, or, um, yeah, Call of Duty, I'm sorry, Black Ops 2 uh, map pack is coming out. And I've, I've got a video playing now for you guys on stream. It's It, it looks sick. It's DLC with new maps. Um, they've even got a new game mode they're adding, uh, which is in Zombies. Now you can actually play as the zombie which sounds incredible and this is actually the first time I've ever really seen this in sort of a competitive game um, outside of maybe fighting games where they add new characters they're actually adding in a new SMG to the game so before we get into the developer discussion and all that sort of thing I wanted to get your guys opinions on what you think adding a, a new weapon in DLC means for not just online play people who don't buy the DLC but also for competitions and competitive play with, with the um, DLC? Yeah, they're adding yeah, a new you, SMG. You, so do you think that's like a good thing? Are, are tournaments going to try to adopt it, or are they going to dismiss it? Um, I mean, what Yeah, well, the thoughts? thing is, is that, like, this new SMG, if anyone saw the video, they're like, it's an SMG and an AR meet one. So it makes you believe that, like, this game is going to, this gun is going to be, like, the god game. And I'm, like, not really looking forward to that, if that's the case. Uh, you know, if it was free DLC, then I could see it being... A, uh, you know included but like you know if you have to pay for it, I don't think that it's something that will be uh, allowed in tournaments if it's something you have to pay for which it obviously is or if it doesn't come out down the line as like free DLC or like something for you to just download so you can have the gun but it is a first though you know what I mean like it's cool to see developers like adding guns to games like Battlefield did it which is pretty cool though like they had a, a wonky version or a wonky way of doing it it'd be cool to be able to see more developers like take that initiative and add things like I'm just throwing this out there I would and it may add absolutely nothing to the game but we're just going to go back to halo or fast i would really like to see them add the plasma rifle back into halo like that'd be cool and yeah. uh, just because i'm gonna like i i used to love that gun and i just thought it was cool or, like an smg doesn't have to be good just like a novelty thing um so perhaps that's maybe what it's going to be like a novelty weapon i'm not too sure uh but you know that's <clears> neither <throat> here nor there because i highly doubt that it's going to be added into competitive play if there is no free version available mm. correct because don't, doesn't everyone have to, like, uh, league-wise, don't they have to all purchase it? You know what I mean? Like, for the gameplay, they would have to down, They would have to not only have access to internet uh, at the LAN that they're going to have, but then they would have to download the gameplay, then they would have to, uh, or not the gameplay, the update. And if it wasn't free, it would cost money. And that's not... Yeah, it basically, you know? I mean, they want to make money. So, like you said, exactly. again, it's... Uh... <laughs> It's uh, all about making money at the end of the day, which is sad. But all the other cool things that they added in there is uh, really cool, though. Like, I mean, uh, I said that uh, repeated that, but, you know, the, the things that they are including is great. Uh, you know, the new map Grind looks really cool. It's like a skate park map. Um, they have uh, the new zombie stuff, which I really don't dabble in, but, you know, it, it all boils back to, in competitive gaming, are these things going to be added, you know, to what we do? And I really don't see that happening, except, like, at least not right now. That's why, you know, it's weird, because I always go back to, like, some of the things that Bungie used to do back in the day. One of my favorite things was when they used to release the DLC in the beginning, and if you wanted to get it in the beginning, you had to pay for it. And it was awesome, because I bought it because I wanted to have the DLC right away. But if you wait a little while, then it becomes free. And that was awesome. You know, that was, like, really cool, because the DLC became free 
through time because, you know, the value obviously went away and no one's going to pay for it. And then everyone eventually ends up getting it, but early adopters are rewarded. And I wish that that system was still implemented because then we'd be able to see metagame in these different, uh, in these different uh, you know, titles like Call of Duty, um, for example, where they, we're not seeing new maps being added and it gets stale and it gets boring. And that's a big problem that you know, Call of Duty has always faced. And, and one of the reasons why you know, other games that have options to make maps and all that stuff have, I would say, thrived in a sense because at least it's fresh and it looks different. Um, you know, when someone tunes into the stream, they're like, oh, crap, what's this map? I never tried this map before, and it's there, as opposed to, you know, yeah, uh, Call of Duty, which has been the same ever since. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll agree with that. Pretty much the exact same what you just said. Mm -hmm. I want to play Devil's Advocate real quick, though. Uh, you know, apps like League of Legends, you have one map. That's it. Consistently. Forever and always. Like, I think that's, you know, that just kind of breaks the whole... Yeah, but they come out with, like new champions all the time so there's yeah that. that's yeah that's yeah that's where they make that's where they i'm saying but i'm saying like the map itself is just always the same i just don't understand how people watch it like i've seen it like, i've tried to get into it and i just can't like oh here's a champion hiding in a tree he swings his axe around and, like shoots out little lasers and then like runs away i don't know it's just not interesting to me sorry <laughs> <laughs> no i mean uh you know it's just how it is man it everyone has their preference like Pretty much every single human being in this chat, everyone yep. has their preference of what they enjoy, and it's fine. And I think that's what makes you know what we do as console gamers awesome because we have all these different tastes, and uh, somewhere down the line it merges at one point or another. Um, it's cool, you know. And uh, I, I think that at the end of the day, we all just want to see what we do grow, right? That's what it is. Uh, that's what it's about. And um, you know, for me, it'll always be, you know, my, my heart will always be with Call of Duty, but, like, I never want to see something, you know, fall apart like Gears or Halo or, you know, something, because we all, we all support it. We all came from there. We all play on Xbox. So. Yeah. Damn straight. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. We need to unite. We're all in the same boat getting our asses kicked by, by PCs, you know? <laughs> PC gamers. Master Race. Like, people are just like, oh, dude, Call of Duty, oh, Halo, oh, Call of Duty sucks, oh, Halo sucks. Like, dude, we're in the same boat. Why are we... Like, you don't see, like, League pros going, StarCraft sucks. Watch League. Like, no. Like, yeah. they tweet each other streams all the time. Like, sometimes they even play the other game. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, there is animosity between, like, those two communities. Like, I see it because my coworkers who work in League and StarCraft, they see And it's always, the fans, you know, they have their preference. They love it. So, that's what it is. You know, like, they love their game. Uh, but pros always support everything, and uh, as role models of the community and all that, I think, uh, you know, it, it's cool to see that happening. Like, when Halo 4 was announced for Dallas, Optic immediately said, like, we're going to go, we're just going to go and play, we're probably going to lose, but we're going to go and play and support Halo. They went specifically to support Halo. Like, they bought a team pass to support Halo. Even uh, Icon said the same thing as another Call of Duty team, they went and supported Halo. So, you know, we're all in it together. When Nade Shot was practicing, even just in Halo Reach before that tournament, he's you know I went in there to his stream and I didn't know who he was and I learned who he was because he switched over to play some. And now I follow his stream and I'll watch him play Call of Duty. Yeah. So I mean I'll watch Call of Duty streams too for that reason for the personality of the person. So if they cross over, obviously it's going to help them get viewers yeah. like Ninja's doing right now. Yeah, like if, if Ninja transitioned to playing COD, like if you saw Ninja streaming COD a lot more, like I'm pretty sure, you know, his, <laughs> the people that watch him for Halo, they, they watch for the personality, you know what I mean? They watch because they enjoy the individual, not necessarily the game. So those fans, you know, transition over like this chat is booming. I'm pretty sure Ninja had a big influence on, on the chat booming it as well as like THC. Like they, you know, the, the fan bases are, are very big for it. So it really just boils down to uh, uh, what we as a community should do in, in supporting one another. And, you know, I, I feel like I, it's awesome to just see everyone transitioning over. But at the same time, though, I don't want to see them just, I guess, leave, abandon their game completely like some Halo players are doing, which kind of blows. Yeah, that's the worst part about it. Like, the, yeah. the, lethal, the lethal fiasco where he pretty much just, like, came into my stream and, like, was just the most unprofessional thing I've ever heard in my entire life, S like screaming, uh, screaming at me, saying, Halo sucks, <laughs> it's terrible, it's bad game, it's so yeah. terrible. Uh, and then like, I'm like, dude, Lethal what? knows how to troll though, man. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like, like he's he, a professional. he knows what he's doing. He like he knows he knows what he sounds like. Like you know what I mean? Like he knows how to push people's buttons and stuff like that. So I. What he, he probably know, shouldn't have said what he said, but, too. Like, but you should never say he that. Wants his, yeah, but he wants his game to be good too. Well, so do I. But you don't see me being like the biggest pessim. Like you don't see me being, like, the, biggest see me being the biggest pessimistic ever. There's like there's a positive spin on everything that you can put. I like I always say this, and like you can say that you don't like Halo. I don't care. Tweet it. It doesn't matter. But if you do, then you're gonna then you need to say why you don't like it. What you would like fixed, and like. Just come back if they do fix it, but just completely just be like ripping the game a new one like like regard I, I know you guys might not believe me, but people like there are people that do look up to TJ There are people that look up to formal there are people that look up to every pro every pro has at least one fan And if that professional player completely just outright says this game sucks. I'm not playing it People are gonna you know, oh, he's not playing it I'm not playing it like and it just starts this huge effect and like it, it you can't do that and like yeah. to, to to everyone who was like uh, <laughs> typing in all caps Halo in the chat when we like started talking about Call of Duty for a minute, like hating another game has never gotten your game on the circuit or or at an event. You know what I mean? So it's fine if you want to troll and be mad or be upset, but just realize it's not in the long run. It's not going to do anything for your game. Um, and if you want to complain about or or discuss or talk about mechanics or improvements, there's room for that. But, you know, just straight out negativity and, and bad mouthing another community uh, has never done anything for anyone. Yeah, Sundance, Sundance isn't going to sit here and be like, wow, people really hate, you know, Halo really hates Call of Duty. Ah, screw Call of Duty, yeah. we'll go back to Halo. Yeah, exactly. perfect, uh, you know, a perfect example, by the way, I'm glad you brought that up. Like, do you remember when he, it, it, to be honest with you, I blame a lot of this, because like, I even said it too, and I was very aggravated about it, when he tweeted out there, uh, Halo or COD, like, voice your opinion or something like that. Yeah, like, that right there was, like, a big, big, like, no-no. Because Yeah, don't do he, it. Like, why would you do that? He simply just made, like, it was like, all right, here you go, everyone, <laughs> fight in a, in a pit, and let's <laughs> yeah, see who can I, spill the most blood. Like, that was just, let him share a main stage. Up. Let them share a main stage. Hmm. Like, yeah, it's, what's it's wrong drama. with that? That's a huge, that was a great idea, Molly. Why not... Just throw in, you know what, why not do like, maybe like half teams, maybe only 130 Call of Duty teams, 130 Halo teams, one big main stage, right, or a one main stage, and just split it up. Do a Call of Duty yeah, here. Or like two, yeah, or switch days, like Friday main stage is, you know, Halo, and Saturday main stage is Call of Duty, and then half, they split, or half the day and half the day, you know, Sunday, because I think it would just stream time too. That's a great idea. I'll tell you why, and that does sound like a great idea, um, but I don't think both communities are there community. yet. They both, well, you, you split the community and then you try to have them share a main stage, it's not going to end well. Like, you tell them to vote on which one they like better. So I, I don't think there's enough mutual respect, at least, not now, but I, I think it's getting there. I, like, I think it is too, because at the smaller, at the smaller events, they have to do multiple games in order to, you know, pay for the overhead for the event. So more and more of these players, they're seeing Call of Duty players at, like, AGL events or smaller lands or New Jersey events and all that stuff. So they're they're used to seeing each other at smaller venues. So when it comes to larger events, they're going to get used to it. They can get used to it. Yeah. yeah. People are reaching out. I think communities are starting to look, at least some of the leaders, the, the bigger names are starting to, like, reach out and be like, Yo, guys, like that game's not that bad. You probably shouldn't like hate on it just because you feel you're entitled to your own game and this and that, which is a little off topic. So, but I think it's good to talk well, especially about. Especially if more pros are playing both games too. Right. You I... know, like the Warriors are doing as a team, and then you know, like Nade Shot was doing with Optic Gaming, and they came over and played Halo Four. Hmm. As they do that, you know, people communities will get used to each other. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, it, it's really it's it's cross pollination. Right, and that's what they want to happen. It's just that the way that it's already been built, it may already be too late. And I hate to be the negative Nancy, um, <laughs> but you know the fact is is that people already have their opinion, and, and, and people will always have their opinion. Like you will, you will always be a fan of your game. Simple as that. But then when you add in the layer of what MLG does or like competitive gaming, then then you know like the cuts become deeper, and uh, and then that's when the hatred starts to come out, and then stuff like that just really doesn't help it either. But you know. It, it's it's unfortunate, man. It is what it is. It's just a uh, a very a very bad uh very bad situation for uh, everyone to be in as as fans of console gaming. Because like 
I've always supported Halo, Gears, COD. Like, that's, like, my thing. When I'm at IPL, I'm like, how can we get Halo, Gears, and COD at IPL? Like, how can IGN Pro League do these three games? Because, to me, that's what I want to do. I don't want to sit there and watch StarCraft and League of Legends. I don't like those games. Like, it's simple as that. But I'm not going to, you know, of course, tell people that, like, you know, it sucks or... You know, like the community's stupid or they're stupid or they're gay, as I'm seeing a lot in the chat. I've been called gay quite a lot. I'm married. It's a cover, but I apologize. Um, but, but yeah, so, uh, you know, in, in all seriousness, though, um, that, that the, the thing is for me, I, I just want to see what we do grow because I don't want to play with a keyboard or mouse. I want to play with a controller, and I want to play Halo, and I want to play Gears, and I want to play COD. That's how I will always be. So, what if whatever. instead of a main stage, we had like a pit, and we threw both sets of players into the pit, and whoever comes out alive, they get the main stage for that. I like that. Let's go. Find your biggest nerds. Do it. Put them right? in the pit. Well, as long, <laughs> long as Gears of War, as long as Gears of War players aren't allowed, because those guys are fucking brutal, man. Hey, like, no just, rules. No yeah, rules. Don't get, don't get like I mean, don't get like CDN or. or uh, cream in there you know like <laughs> after, yeah are you talking how about every gears play I'm, i've seen so many gears pros and they're like, oh, all, nick, like Merck. Nine, yeah. nine, nick, Merck. nick Merck is a perfect example man like we were talking shit to each other online at a halo reach like right when halo reach came out and like they walked up to our team the very first event and was like what's up man oh uh, you guys talking shit online i was like dude we we're just kidding man and, and he's like like freaking like jack and i'm just like dude like i'm sorry like, I, I was just messing around this is, halo, this is halo reach dc yeah this that, was halo reach yeah DC. i competed like, at that event i competed <laughs> at that event yeah so <laughs> it was crazy I was afraid of gears players ever since that tournament i was like they're gonna fucking kill me <laughs> oh just no i'll never say a bad thing about gears ever again <laughs> yeah like i remember we played uh nick Merckx and them in a scrim when i when we were preparing for dc and uh, they beat us, and I, I said something, and then at the event, he did, like, literally the same thing. Dude has, like, no fear at all. He's... He <laughs> walked right up to me, man, and was like, what's up, bitch? I'm like, what's up, man? Like, I had no idea what he looked like. He's like, remember talking <laughs> shit to me? I was like, no, I don't remember talking shit to you, dude. Oh, it was crazy. crazy. It was scary. Oh, I was scared, <laughs> man. <laughs> so, yeah, no pit. I don't like that pit idea. We're taking that pit. <laughs> don't do the pit. Don't do the pit thing. But, but I think... All right, so... To, to get back to the point and just to make sure everyone knows what we're talking about, um, I, I think that the cross-pollination will get to a point where the, the shooter community has the potential to look like sort of the fighting game community and how they do things. Um, small sort of local run tournaments with multiple games and, you know, pros playing multiple games. You know, if when Gears of War Judgment comes out, if uh, some Halo teams and Call of Duty teams pick that up and start streaming that and go to a few events for that, uh, that can only help the community out, help both communities, you know, boost viewership that way. Uh, so I hope the community gets there, uh, and I hope that's in our future. So just to touch on, uh, I think the future for Black Ops 2 looks good. We were talking about the DLC in that. DLC mm -hmm. probably won't be included, at least from the start, but... You had uh, mentioned rule set, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, go ahead. Well, you're the, you're the I was going to throw it to you anyway, since you're the uh. Uh, expert on that. Well, right now, like, it's kind of just being juggled between a few different things. So the general consensus now is that what was used for UMG is pretty much going to be the standard, but there has been a, a uh, I guess, a temporary hold on uh, select fire for the foul because it's pretty much been proven to be, like, insanely overpowered. Um, uh, I don't see it, but, you know, it, it whatever. Uh, in any case, though, uh, that's what it is right now. So, yes, yeah, so we score streaks and, you know, everything's allowed uh, for the most part. Things are banned, though. There are going to be some bans, uh, you know, like UAV and all that. The game uh, got substantially better when UAV was banned. At first, I was like, don't ban anything. Just leave it alone. You know, like they have a, they have a goal in mind. And then when I started to realize, like, the goal really wasn't there, and then people were like, yeah, let's just, you know, like, ban UAVs and all, then that really did step up gameplay. It changed it up a little bit. Then I was actually at a tournament this weekend where uh, they banned uh, Hunter Killer Drones as well as UAV, and that created some interesting, uh, I guess, mixtures of score streaks and all that as well. But they've definitely added to the game. It's created a little bit of a meta where, like, you know, you have to think, like, all right, if, for example, Search and Destroy... If a person just got like three kills and there's a dude like disarming and he has got no kills, don't let the dude disarming uh, disarm it actually. Just tell him to get off of it. You disarm it so that you can continue to build up your score streak. Little things like that that really add uh, to it so that you can continue to build it up and gain that upper hand moving forward. 
Um, it's been received, I would say, pretty well between uh, within the community, and that's where it's at right now. Score streaks being banned and all uh, through the GB variant rule set's not going to be used, and I think MLG is going to defer to whatever the community is using. I mean, even the European ban-heavy Deserto community adopted what North American community is doing as well. That's so awesome. It's been, it's been good. Yeah, everyone's yeah. kind of just gravitating to this universal rule set, uh, little by little. No. Would you attribute that towards uh, people realizing that a more vanilla-based or at least more recognizable game on stream adds viewers? Or do you think it's because uh, Treyarch just balanced those score streaks in a way that actually made them competitively viable? You know, it's a variety of things. I, I you know, I definitely feel like they are balanced enough where they are viable. Like uh, Lightning Strike, for example. Whenever you bring up like the giant iPad that I call it for the Lightning Strike. Um, you know, you get like a thing called a ping, which uh, me and Rambo were, when we were commentating in the Fry Cup, we started like adopting that term. And, you know, the ping pretty much just showed you where on the map your opponent was. So it was kind of like a little UAV, but the catch with it was you couldn't use it after, uh, after that ping. It was done. You know, like you lost the ability to see uh, where anyone was. And that really, uh, I guess, lost the advantage of the lightning strike because part of the lightning strike, what makes it so deadly is that when you get that ping, you get that general idea of where your opponent's going to be. When you lose that, then it's just like, all right, well, shot in the dark, let's see where they're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it had, that was a little thing that added something to, uh, to Call of Duty. Um, you know, it, it's just a, it really kind of feels like where we're at right now with the settings, everything is working well. There could always be tweaks. Um, but moving forward, of course, I think that we will see some balance changes. Treyarch has been pretty adamant about that. Uh, although David Von der Hart claims up and down that the foul's not broken, um, perhaps, you know, perhaps it could be. Uh, perhaps, it, perhaps it is broken. Perhaps it could be fixed. And that's the thing. They're, they're listening, so that's good. Like, at least we're getting, like, that dev feedback to an extent. It's not mm -hmm. perfect, but at least we're getting it. And that was, uh, that's a step in the right direction. And hopefully other developers see that. You know, they see that feedback. Uh, that we're giving as a competitive community to uh, to Treyarch, and they see like, hey, listen, these guys actually know what they're talking about. Let's see, like, you know, if we could adopt that same thing. You know, Gears of War is doing the same thing as well. Uh, they flew out like a bunch of players to play test the game, but like some of them were competitive players, some of them were casual players, event organizers, and that went over really well um, with Epic. So the only thing I can hope for is the developers start to see that competitive players have a great view of what they of what needs to be done to update their games in ways where it, it creates a, a more enjoyable experience you know not to sound like a super elitist but i mean we know what we're talking about we spend hours on the freaking game you know we might as well defer to us for that uh, or come to us for that uh, knowledge so that is pretty much where it's at right now things are looking pretty yeah. good i nice. must say Good stuff. Yeah, sorry, Chad. Don't hate me. No, dude. If, <laughs> if, if Chad's Jimmy's I, or Russell, you know, like, I have not even watched the chat. Their their Jimmy's are theirs. Like I have and not. I alone, and throughout the entire time I said that. Yeah, I. Because they would love to. They would have, love to have settings to out of the box Caleb that works. Let's be honest. We would love to have settings out of the box that works. Before and done great. for the Call of Duty community, I would do for the Halo community in a heartbeat. Like that is the kind of person I am, and like I think that. That is what needs to be done. Like there, like there needs to be more people like that that want to just get down and, and do more things for the community. Like the AGL thing, I think it's freaking amazing. I think it's a great thing. Finally, someone stepping up and doing events. I watched the stream. I tweeted out there. You know, uh, UMG potentially doing Halo events. It's going to be great. Like that's the thing. You need more people to step up and do things instead of just saying like, oh, MOG would take care of us because the sad truth, people, is that they are not going to take care of you. They they're can business. give two shits. They're Money. Business. Yeah. Okay, they're a business. That is it. And it's not to talk shit about MLG because, uh, once again, love all the guys there, but it's business. It's, yeah. You have to make money. And Halo, unfortunately, doesn't make money, but the community is passionate. So why not just step up and support it? And that's why I support THC. I always have. That's a big thing people, um, just to touch on that, people need to realize too, like all, all these companies out there are businesses. I know Molly, I know Molly's got uh, arguments for days and honestly our arguments are fantastic about it, but it's, Halo community doesn't need to feel like because it's not on the circuit, that means they hate you or that, you know, they're out to get you or they don't want you to have tournaments, so fuck you Halo community, no tournaments for you. No, they're a business trying to make money 
trying to be sustainable, trying to, you know, set themselves in a position to where they can run a Halo tournament if they want to. You know what I mean? So it's frustrating at least. I feel like I want a tattoo. Sundance is not your daddy across my forehead. Halo is dad, man. Halo is dad. (laughs) I've been seeing that. What is up with that, man? Like, that is hilarious. Everyone should the just Halo tweet Sundance. Where's my allowance? Like, that's <laughs> what I feel like. Like, that's is that what the Halo community expects? I don't know. But yeah, I, I mean, they're a business, so everything's good. I, but the Halo community is far from unsupported. We have AGL, Gamers sure. Outreach, UMG is now looking to do tournaments. Um, you you're gonna be a voice. Virgin you know, Gaming has rights to it, you know. Yeah. So it's it's far from in a bad spot. A lot of people just, I think, they just take the extreme emotion and just run with it. You know, Halo's dead, R.I.P. Halo, and that's just their argument, you know, which is fine. Like, you, you want to troll and be be like that, it's fine. I have no problem against it. But as long as people understand the actual meaning behind it, like why it's not at MLG right now and, and this and that, then then I'm cool with it. Yeah. But, so that's yeah. a little business a business venture, I guess. For, for those for that community but uh Halo is dead Halo is dead, Halo is dead. Halo. I think that's hilarious because someone just spelled it and then <laughs> yeah, it's and now it's a meme. the yeah. level <laughs> it's hilarious hey um I don't know uh, what you have left um Frank to talk about but Muggsy sent me this he wanted me to mention it really quickly if it's okay uh yeah Halo montage contest uh, yeah I'll I saw that braggingrights.com they're doing first place is like a thousand dollars. Almost how many viewers Halo we have? First place is a thousand dollars for a for a montage. Halo, man. get on Halo, Halo get your clips. Content. No bull shot, bull shot not allowed. No bull shot clips. <laughs> <laughs> and you can make use a bull shot like montage. Oh, there goes half my clips, Dan. <laughs> Damn it, dude. <laughs> I'm trolling. Second place Send me your bull shot. Five hundred and third place is two fifty. Fraggingright.com. Awesome. I'm trying to find it. The guy sent it to me as well. I will I'll paste it in chat again in case you cleared it or whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's sick. That's awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> Halo, guys, you got plenty of stuff to do. Plenty of stuff to keep you busy. Um, but let's talk about the new game, the new kid on the block coming out a couple days after uh, MLG Dallas, Gears of War Judgment. And to to my own fault, I haven't followed the game much. I, I know, you know, one or two things about it. Um, so if you guys, if anyone's looking forward to it, if anyone knows more than me, what are you looking forward to? Personally, I'm just looking forward to a new Gears of War game. I, I didn't like Gears 1. For some reason, I fell in love with Gears 3. Uh, so I'm excited for this one. But do any of you guys following it have any opinions about it? Feel a certain way? Um, I've always played I've played every single Gears of War. Uh, not only Gears 3. I played Gears all of the campaign. That's really why I buy Gears. Yeah, um, same here. Probably, probably one of the most depressing campaigns out of any game I've ever played in my entire life. Um, but regardless, it, it's still a, like it hooks me in every single time. You know, when 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 someone someone dies in every single game, um, and you don't expect it. It's like, dude, no way, man. Like you're awesome as shit. Like I play, I play, I use you to play online. You can't die in the campaign. It's not fair. <laughs> but like that's, I mean, I'm super looking forward to buying it just to play the campaign. And uh, I always have fun, man, blasting people's asses with shotguns. So like I'm gonna definitely pug for a little bit on the on the online play matchmaking system. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know much about it, but I know that I haven't been let down once by a campaign or, you know, my gameplay. Excuse me, gameplay. So I'm super stoked. It comes out in March? Uh, the 19th, I believe. Yeah. And, and I'm yeah. excited for it because it's it, Gears of War 3, unfortunately, petered out uh, sort of quickly. But it did have the features that the Halo community has been begging for, like spectator mode. Um, and things like that, and obviously they had their own uh, ranking system and sort of almost, now I feel like I'm going to say league play because that's what the Black Ops 2 standard is, but they had, you know, that section, the ranking system. Uh, so I am looking forward to it. I I think it might catch people by surprise, but I've heard people have worries as well um, because they are changing the loadout system a bit. I don't, Golden Boy, I'm not sure how much you're familiar with it, but I know they're sort yeah. of switching it up. Maybe you could speak a bit on it. They're changing a lot, man. Like it, this is like a completely new, like game. The way that they're operating it, they're even adding like a new game mode um, called Overrun, which is like a o- almost like a MOBA style thing, which is cool, I guess. You know, I mean, right. I haven't played it yet, but you know, Barbosa, who uh, you know I, I live with, he has and he loves it and says that it could potentially be like the next uh, 
the next like competitive game mode for Gears, but really when you think about it, like everyone's going to play like their like the kind of game that Gears is 4v4, what's already been established. Uh, they have like team deathmatch and domination, I believe. I don't even know what are the game types that they have. But I know team deathmatch is in the game, which is the first for Gears 4 as well. So it is substantially different. It's just a new game and uh we'll see what happens um truth be told it's it's different they added these loadouts now they have classes in this overrun game type um which really is a big change from what we usually see in gears of war uh, but we have not seen much about um the actual like competitive multiplayer or at least i have not but if someone has and they can perhaps uh you know they could perhaps uh fill, fill us in on it but i haven't seen anything on it uh, for right now, I know it's it's looking good from the competitive. Com well, we're not like I, let me rephrase that. The competitive community is very aggravated because they took the down but not out mechanic in it. Like that is something that's like gone, which is you know the the when you get on all fours, got him get flamed for that. And yeah. uh, you know when you're down and you're like down but not, not out, out. <laughs> they, they took that out. And uh, it is out now. It is down and out. And they took it out. Um, so that is the, that is a big change. You're not fighting locust and cog, cog anymore it's just cog versus cog like humans versus humans red versus blue which is another big change as, as well so it, it is a different game um but i'm looking forward to it change is always good and uh you know you never know perhaps it could um perhaps it could revitalize the uh the franchise because it, it always kind of stagnated as the lead franchise that Microsoft microsoft wanted it to be when it was first announced you know when when gears of war first came out that was supposed to be like the halo replay replacement title for xbox 360 uh that was like oh wow the original xbox had halo that was like the flagship gears of war was supposed to be that for the xbox 360 and it never really happened that way halo still remained the top dog in uh microsoft exclusives all five of them so perhaps um you know oh, we could we could see that come up again but you know with halo 4 out uh it, this could work to the advantage of gears of war because you know, since the new Halo's out, then the next one, then then the new Gears comes out. Perhaps people are going to be like, ah, I'm tired of playing this. You know, because you have the you have the people who hop. You know, who game hop. You have the people who go from Call of Duty to Call of Duty, or they go from Halo to Call of Duty to Gears and back and forth. It that's just the nature of the community. Um, so perhaps we could see some good growth. But I I am not. Uh, I'll wait. Right, wait to pass judgment until the games in our pass hands. Pass judgment basically. on Gears judgment. Yes. Like fitting title, there. fitting title. Good. To be honest, Good. I wonder if they did that on purpose, yeah. or at least talked <laughs> about it. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. At least giving it a shot. New new stuff is always good to at least try. You know, got to get your hands on it before you make a a decision. You know, to dismiss it or or what have you or support it. Uh, but hopefully, it it surprises a lot of people and and gets its fair shake. And I'm sure if we can unify the FPS communities abroad, it will be fantastic. You know, have uh halo guys support it and call of duty guys support it and vice versa it'll be good but it's almost midnight here um i know it's early for for golden boy on his end his cam's frozen looks like he's nine o'clock he's oh my cam's frozen he's, you're doing Man, some, some sort of fantastic o face I mean, it right looks now. like he it looks like he's oh, just preparing going, really all right yeah, you had a serious o face going for a minute it was it, i actually loved it but i mean it, i'm <laughs> down with it you know what i mean i mean what if that's what people people want i'm already getting the uh Already getting schmangled on the chat here, so it's all good, man. We love having you on. <laughs> it's yeah. been fun. Yeah, your points have been fantastic. We'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, I think that covers about everything, guys. Uh, again, if you want any of the links I posted in chat, if you missed those, they are on HaloCouncil.com. I will link the thread in a minute, and I will ramble and talk, you know, in a nonsensical, and unimportant way until I get there. But Molly, go ahead. If you're rambling, I'll throw in something. Uh, we we are gonna do a tournament at bigteammetal.net a BTV tournament with of course our settings which would be more competitive than what you see in matchmaking so if you want to head <laughs> over there will it have objective game modes? there will be objective, there will be extraction oh in big team battle big team extraction. battle extraction yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. God. actually that sounds fun yep. yeah, I want to see that, that shit that sounds good, actually. it's a battle uh, rifle start I still want to see that shit. <laughs> good. Oh man, yeah. that'd be crazy! Like, yo, yeah, kill vehicles all of are balanced. Vehicles are balanced. So, bigteammetal.net, you can head over and see what. Do that. If you go to the forums, you'll see the announcement section on the forum. What well, other that's shoutouts, Molly? Point. Since you started your shoutouts, I was gonna go into shoutouts. But any other shoutouts that you might have, Molly? What should we check out? 
Where can oh, we find Frag you? Oh, Rice again, Frag and Rice. Halocouncil.com. I don't know. Ninja Stream. Shout out to Ninja Stream. Straight up. Yo, like the most thank consistent stream out there, really, for Halo. The stream, I would say. The stream. Some stream. would say. I would say. Some would say. <laughs> yeah. All right, you good? You good on your shout outs, Molly? Good. All good. Right. I'm shouted out. Ninja, who who you got shouting out tonight, man? Um. Just uh, all the people who are actually taking the me like playing Call of Duty and Halo, uh, you know, just playing both and streaming both. I, I I'm really happy that a lot of my viewers are still watching me, even though I'm playing COD, still getting like 1,200 viewers, um, which is awesome. Uh, so I guess just pretty much shout out to everyone that follows me and doesn't bitch when I switch games because they should realize I play Halo for 10 hours and COD for two and <laughs> not and not complain. Um, but yeah. Nice. Those those assholes. Uh, <laughs> and that's pretty. And, and um, obviously, uh, shout out to Frank. You thank you, Forex, for putting the show together. It was great. Uh, and of course, Golden Boy for his circular webcam that isn't showing. Yeah, it's alright, yeah, buddy. No big deal. And then, and then uh, Molly for not getting how much I make a year. Right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hundred thousand. Ninja's throwing his own tournament. Hundred thousand. All right. No, that's it. That's pretty much it. Just um. Much love, everyone. Good stuff, man. How about you, Golden Boy? You, you probably got shout out everybody, man. I want to hear what's going on with Shoot Mania. Give us, give oh, us yeah. all, the, give us all the scoops, man. What, what can we, uh, well, where can we look out for you? Uh, you know, I'm always with the IGN Pro League. Um, you know, you can follow them on Twitter, IGN Pro League, basically. You no know, cat, no spaces or underscores, or whatever. Um, I do Shoot Mania there. It's been, it's been a great ride so far. It's a dream come true. You know, just a little kid from the Bronx trying to make a dream happen. So. I'm happy about that. Uh, shout out to the chat for being so courteous to me tonight and being probably the kindest individuals that I've ever seen <laughs> in the history of uh, I mean, chats on Twitch TV. You guys are amazing human beings. Please keep it up. God loves you. Uh, then um, the shout out to Halo Council as always. You know, Nexi is a close friend of mine and I actually wouldn't even be where I am right now if, it's, uh, if it wasn't for Nexi. He gave me my shot in casting. And I couldn't even, uh, I couldn't think of enough. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the Halo Council, I always told him, man, you should do it, make it happen. And he did. And I'm really glad that all this is blossoming so well. And Frank is probably more of my favorite Halo commentator. So thank you. Oh, you. Thanks, man. Um, and uh, Ninja, I never met this dude before. And it was cool. He's a funny dude. And uh, great Pokedex voice. So, <laughs> dude, thank you, man. Will... <laughs> yeah, so. I'm looking man, forward Molly. to talk with you again, so. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. And Molly, of course, you as well. You're amazing. I love, I well, actually watched a big team battle tournament that you and uh, Frank commentated, or like well, Frank had commentated, uh, and then I don't know if you did it or not, but I, I tuned in. Yeah, so, you know, I always like to do that and, and tune and watch Halo. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, oh, and uh, there's a tournament that I'll be attending uh, February 2nd, uh, WGG out in uh, Sacramento, if you live in the Sacramento area or in the California area, like East Bay. Please go to it. You can hit me up on Twitter, Golden Boy FTW. I can fill you in on that stuff. And that's basically it. So nice. thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'll wrap it up. I got just to refresh you guys. We got the MLG opener, March 15th to the 17th. Tune into that. Arena Gaming is January uh, 25th to the 27th. Tune into that. We've got the Gamers Outreach Charity Land, which is going on February 16th and 17th. Check that out. Uh, all our Twitters, if you want to hit us up, give us feedback. Anything like that are around our, our cameras somewhere. So check us out there. Um, and just for the last time, there is where you can find all the links I posted um, from tonight and, and just check out everything we talked about and leave some feedback in that thread as well. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we, we're bringing back the live shows. Couldn't have like gotten better support. It's amazing. Uh, we almost hit 2,000. I wanted to hit it. We got about 1,750, which is amazing. You guys are the best. But thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.